Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Okay, let's begin. Uh, we're going to start. Just let me share the screen with you. Just a second. There it is. Okay, everybody, um, let's take a good look. Welcome once again. This is uh, English Avanzado Modulo 1, Advanced English 1, and uh, that's me, Ivan Doñang, at your service. Once again, happy to Hello, be Hello, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Hello, Byron. Okay, and this is session number three, right? Today's August the 30th of 2023. So everybody, welcome. Happy to have you here tonight. As usual, uh, the first thing we're going to do is call the attendance. Okay, just going to open the window here. It's a bit hot. Um, we're going to call the attendance. That's the first thing. So uh, when you hear your name, please let me know. Ana Cecilia Rodriguez de Perez. Ana Cecilia Rodriguez de Perez. Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Present teacher. Welcome. Carlos Roberto Dominguez. Carlos Roberto Dominguez. Cristina Abigail Quintanilla Amador. Cristina Abigail Quintanilla Amador. Are you here? Damaris Merari Marroquín Rivas. Present teacher. Welcome. Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. Is Daisy here tonight? Elisa Arelí López Campos. Present teacher. Welcome. Elizabeth del Carmen Mejía Torres. Present teacher. Welcome. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Erika Maricela Morales Cordero. Erika Maricela Morales Cordero. Gabriel Antonio Nájera Martel. I'm here. Welcome. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Present. Welcome. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Present teacher. Welcome. Madeline Diana Cerón de Paz. Good evening, present. Good evening. Miguel Arsenio Alas Crespin. Present, sir. Welcome. Rufino Amilcar Hernández Linares. Present. Welcome. Uh, Sandra Yanet Vázquez Cortés. Good evening. I'm here. Good evening. Welcome. Saúl Arnulfo Mengíbar Crespin. Present, teacher. I'm here. Welcome, Saul. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. She here? Okay, I'm just calling some names again. Before we start, Ana Cecilia Rodriguez de Perez. Ana Cecilia Rodriguez de Perez. Carlos Roberto Dominguez. Present teacher. Welcome. Cristina Abigail Quintanilla Amador. Cristina Abigail Quintanilla Amador. Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. Yeah, Welcome. Erika Maricela Morales Cordero. Erika Maricela Morales Cordero. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. 
present. Welcome. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Okay. Um, I'm going to take the attendance at the end once one more time, but now we have to start. So everybody welcome once again. Okay, let's begin. So yesterday we were explaining um, the grammar about the use of gerunds, because you know that gerunds come after certain verbs. They come after prepositions also. Okay. And then we have uh, verbs like this one. Okay. I believe we didn't cover this one yesterday. Just let me check. Uh, yeah, okay, this is something we did not cover. So uh, what do we have here? Now, verb plus preposition plus ing. Sometimes that can happen. You can have a verb that is followed by a preposition and then the verb in ing or the gerund form, the nominal form of the verb. So some verbs can have the structure verb plus object plus preposition and then the verb in ing. So this is the one that takes the object. And actually, I think I've made a small mistake here because it should be pl verb plus object plus preposition plus ing. That's the correct form. I apologize. So again, some verbs can have the structure verb plus object plus preposition plus ing. If this sounds complicated, don't worry, it is not. Let's just take a look at the examples. You, you you have accuse of, accuse of. This is one, okay? There's a verb accuse with the preposition of. There's an example, and I'm going to zoom in. He accused me of telling lies, okay? He accused me of telling lies. Somebody said like, you're a liar, okay? What you're saying is not true. So that person accused me of telling lies. You have the verb accused, the object is me, the preposition is of. And after a preposition, as we have studied, uh, you have to use a verb in ing form, okay? You have to use the gerund form. So the second one, congratulate on, okay? Congratulate on. How does it work? Well, we have an example. We congratulated Lisa on winning the first prize, okay? This is similar to in Spanish, you know, when you say felicitar por, okay? But in English, you say congratulate on. So we, then you have the verb congratulated, then the object, who? Lisa, preposition, on, and then the verb in ing, winning the first prize. We congratulated Lisa on winning the first prize. The next one is prevent from, to prevent from something, evitar algo. So prevent from. What? Sorry, it's here, prevent from. What prevented you from coming to see us? Que evitó que vinieras a vernos, okay? What prevented you from coming to see us? So you have the verb prevented, then there's the object, which is you. Then you have the preposition, which is from, and then you have the verb in ing, coming. What prevented you from coming to see us? We also have stop from, okay? Which is similar to prevent from. Okay, so example, the, the rain didn't stop us from enjoying our vacation. That means we went on vacation and the weather was bad. It rained a lot, but we didn't care. We enjoyed it, okay? We decided not to let us, you know, uh, ruin our vacation. Not to let it, I'm sorry, ruin our, ruin our vacation. So uh, the rain didn't stop us from enjoying our vacation. Stop is the verb, the object is us. The preposition is from, and then the verb in ing, enjoying. Then we have this, suspect of, suspect hmm, of. Examples, nobody suspected the general of being a spy. The general was a spy and nobody knew. Nobody suspected the general of being a spy, right? Suspected is the verb, the object is the general, and the preposition is of. After that, verb in ing, being a spy. Finally, you have thank for. Thank for. I thanked everyone for helping me. Okay, thanked is the verb. The object is everyone. The preposition is for, and then the verb in ing, helping me. I thanked everyone for helping me. Okay, so I want, sorry. 
<laughs> wrong. Okay. I want you to take a look at this. I'm going to share this with you, by the way. Uh, note this example with not an ing. Note the example in the negative. He accused me of, of not telling the truth. Okay. He accused me of not telling the truth. All right. Then uh, we have uh, this one. Note that we say apologize to somebody for. You apologize to a person for something. I apologized to them for keeping them waiting. Eh? Me disculpe con ellos por tenerlos esperando. Give me one second, please. One second. Thank you very much. Okay, so again, right, we say apologize to somebody for, I apologize to them for keeping them waiting. Before we continue, I would like to ask you, do you have any questions about uh, this piece of grammar that I've been explaining? I'm going to share the information with you right now on WhatsApp. So um, any questions? It's a good time to ask. Hello? Okay, I assume no questions then. Let's continue. Uh, this is your turn. Take a good look. Complete the sentences on the right. Now, these are a series of conversations. And sometimes in the conversation, you are a participant. Like the first one, it's an example. It says you and Kevin. Okay, this is a conversation between you and Kevin. And Kevin told you, it was nice of you to help me. Thanks very much. So... Kevin thanked me for helping him. That's the idea. Kevin thanked me for helping him. Okay. So what will be next? Okay. Number two is uh, a conversation between Anne and Tom. All right. So what's next? Tom says, I'll take you to the station. I insist. What will be the case this time? Who wants to participate? Following the example. Kevin thanked me for helping him. Okay. Now Tom is talking to Anne and he says, I'll take you to the station. I insist. So Tom insisted. Who wants to try? If you know the answer, please raise your hand. Saul Arnulfo, thank you very much. I'm not sure, but I think that Tom insisted me for taking um actually you cannot say insisted me because you are not part of the conversation okay insist uh, insist and and is insist, here so okay. insist on uh -huh, insisted on for taking um okay so you're adding one word there's one word too many right there so you say tom insisted on On taking. Uh huh. Insisted on taking and where? In the station. To the station, right? So Tom insisted on taking Anne to the station. There you go. Thank you, Saul. Wendy Carolina, what about the number three? Okay, now this is a conversation between you and Dan. Now, Dan says, I hear you got married. Congratulations. How about this one? No, no more participants. Okay. Um, could be Dan congratulated me mm -hmm. for getting married. Well, you don't congratulate a person for doing something. It's a different preposition. But you can check. Uh -huh. you, you can check what's up if you want. Okay. I just shared the information with you. Well, or we can go okay. back. Take a look. You congratulate on. 
That's the preposition. Okay, so uh, can you repeat it? Dan congratulated. Dan congratulated. Dan congratulated me mm -hmm. on getting married. Dan congratulated me on getting married. That is correct. Okay, very good. Yeah. Thank you, Wendy. So, uh, John, con uh, Dan congratulated me on getting married. Great. Number four, it's a conversation between Sue and Jen. And Jen says, it was nice of you to come to see me. Thank you. Gabriel Antonio. And, and, and me and uh, Sue mm -hmm. for coming to see me. Okay, Jen thanked Sue for coming to see, to see me. But, see uh -huh, to see her, of course, right? So Jen thanked Sue. Thanks, Sue. I'm sorry for coming to see her. Okay, great. All right, there you go. What about number five? Thank you, Gabriel. That was good. Uh, number five, it's a conversation between you and Kate. And Kate says, sorry, I'm late. So... What do we have? Gabriela Sequeira. Kate apologized on me for being late. Kate apologized? Apologized on me for being late. On me for being late. Well, uh, you don't apologize on a person. That is the only part of your answer that is not correct. It's a different word. If we go back and see the slide, or you check the information that you have, uh, we have, note that we say apologize to somebody for mm -hmm. doing something. Uh -huh. So what do we have here? There is, uh, Kate, can you repeat it? Kate apologized to me for being late. That's correct. Kate apologized to me for being late. Now, um, it is not absolutely necessary for us to say to me. You can simply say, Kate apologized for being late and, and people will understand. Okay, so either form is fine. Okay, so don't worry, right? You can use either form. But yeah, very good. Thank you, uh, Gabriela. That was very nice. And the last one, it's a conversation between you and Jane. And Jane told you, you don't care about other people. So how about this one? She's being very severe with you. You don't care about other people. So what's that? Who knows the answer to this um, item in this exercise? Nobody wants to try. Gabriela, thank you very much. Jane accused me for being, for not being, no, for not caring about people. Okay, but the preposition is not right. Oh. Not. Okay, if, if you want to participate, please raise your hand. Okay. <laughs> okay, so um, what is the right preposition? That's the right preposition. Okay, uh, everything uh, Gabriela said was very good, but the preposition was a problem. Gabriel Antonio. The preposition of this case is of. Uh, sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, the preposition is of. Of, okay, can you say the complete sentence? Jane accused me of Caring about other people? Uh, she accused you of the opposite, actually. So Jane accused, accused me of? Caring about other people. Well, but she said that you don't care. She didn't say you care. She said you don't care. So Jane accused me of? Not caring about other people. Uh -huh. Not caring about other people. That's right. Jane accused me of not caring about other people. 
Okay, now uh, this may be a bit difficult, but sometimes um, you need to memorize the verb and the preposition that goes with it. Okay, so if you go back to the list, for example, you have accuse of. Okay, so that's something that you need to memorize. Accuse of, accuse of, accuse from, of. Congratulate on, congratulate on. And if possible, repeat it. Okay, repeat it several times until you memorize it. Okay, prevent from, stop from. Okay, suspect of, thank for, et cetera, et cetera. Because uh, this kind of structure is known as a collocation. And in the case of a collocation, well, you're only, the only way of learning it is by memorizing it. So there you go. Very good, uh, everybody. Thank you for your participation. I will say thank you for participating in this exercise, okay, using the structure. So, um, Let's take a look at the final section on this, uh, say, uh, extended grammar explanation. You have verb plus two infinitive or ing. Now, if you remember, and, and this is something that we mentioned yesterday, let's go back a little bit. Well, let's go back a lot, actually. Okay, uh, you have this. Use the gerund or infinitive form after these verbs. There are certain verbs that can take either the infinitive form or the gerund form. Okay, so those verbs are can stand, love, hate, and there are more. Okay, so you can say can stand being or can stand to be. Love taking or love to take. Hate getting up or hate to get up. And that's exactly what we're going to study right now. Just let me go back to where we were. We did this yesterday and this today. Okay, so that's the one. Verb plus two infinitive or ing. Okay, you can choose. These verbs can be followed by a two infinitive or an ing verb without changing their meaning. So you can choose. Okay, one is begin. You can say he began talking or he began to talk. Which one is right? Both are right. Okay, continue. They continue smoking or they continue to smoke. Okay. Both forms are possible. Hate. Do you hate working on Saturday? Or do you hate to work on Saturday? A gerund form or two infinitive. Okay. Like. I like swimming or I like to swim. Okay. Love. She loves painting or she loves to paint. Prefer. She pre Pat prefers walking home or Pat prefers to walk home. Start. They start singing or they start to sing. And can stand. That's another one. I can't stand seeing you so unhappy. Or I can stand to see you so unhappy. Before we continue, okay, because after that there's exercise time. Uh, do you have any questions about uh, any of this? I'm going to share this with you right now via WhatsApp. There it is. Do you have any questions? Anything that is uh, not entirely clear? This is a good moment for you to ask. Saul. Okay, it is impossible to say, for example, he began to talking. No, that's impossible. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's either talking or to talk, okay? But you cannot okay. combine them. We need a preposition, right? You need to, say, to talk. To talk, okay. Uh, that's right, because that's a two infinitive form. So, yeah. No more questions. We move on. Okay, now let's go back to this. Okay. Um, let's move on. Okay, now let's check. Okay, this is an exercise that we have to do. Now let's check, and it's in the platform. So, it's exercise 1.2. Read the dialogues and complete the sentences. If two answers are possible, write both of them. Separate both answers using a slash. So remember to use either gerund or infinitive or both if possible. So um, periods are placed after a place for you. Sorry. Follow the example. Ada said, Sam isn't happy when he has nothing to do. So Gary says, I know. It really bothers him. So the answers are, Sam can stand having nothing to do or to have nothing to do or having nothing to do to have nothing to do. All of this is possible. So uh, let's do the exercise together, okay? 
the first one is there, of course, right? Uh, it's an example. So uh, Sam isn't happy when he has nothing to do. And Gary says, I know, it really bothers him. So Sam can stand having nothing to do or to have nothing to do. Okay, so if you answer this in the platform, it should be correct. What about number two? Vic said, I hardly ever go to school parties anymore. And June says, me neither. They are not as much fun as they used to be. So Vic and June avoid, what do they avoid? Gabriel Antonio. Going, going to school parties. Going to school parties or simply going to parties. Okay, that's right. If you answer either of these two, uh, well, responses, okay, in the platform, it should be taken as correct. Okay, thank you very much. Number three goes like this. Tina says, you visit your parents on the weekends, don't you? And Leslie says, yes, I spend Sundays with them. I'm too busy the rest of the week. All right, so Leslie prefers... What does you prefer? If you know the answer, please raise your hand. What does Leslie prefer? Spending. OK. Uh, Saul, you were saying? Okay, so thank you. Leslie prefers uh, spending Sunday with them. I don't know. Okay, yeah, it's it's spending Sundays with her parents, or uh, yeah, okay, spending Sundays with her parents. That would be a correct answer. However, you have to remember that in the platform, there is one specific answer that you have to you have to provide. If you provide something else, even if it's correct, it will take it as wrong. Okay. But that answer is logical. It's grammatically correct, and it makes sense uh, according to you know the, the 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 original conversation. But there's another one, okay? There's another one that we can use. Who can tell me? Gabriela. Leslie prefer prefers visiting her parents on weekends. Okay, yeah, you can say Leslie prefers visiting her parents on the weekend. Okay or to visit her parents on the weekend, okay? So those are answers right there. Uh, remember that if you get the wrong, the wrong answer, you can experiment a little bit. For example, I understand, if I remember correctly, it's weekend in the answer, but if it doesn't work, you can add an S to it, say on the weekends, okay? Just make sure that you make the necessary changes. The thing with the platform is that sometimes when you need to type in an answer, if you provide one letter that is incorrect, okay, or one simple uh, symbol, I'm sorry, is not in the right place, it will take it as incorrect, even though the answer might be correct. So that's the thing with the platform. We have to be very careful. Okay, so that's the knowledge check 1.2. All right, now this exercise should be complete by now. Let's move on. Okay, ah, by the way, there's uh, part four. Okay, Tom says, are you going to take an Italina class? It should be Italian class this summer. Okay, Ivy says, yes, I am. I love to learn new languages. So what about Ivy? What is she into? If you know the answer, please raise your hand. Your virtual hand. Madeline. Ivy is into learning new languages that is correct ivy is into learning new languages yeah that's right very good thank you very much uh number five ang says do you want to go rock climbing with me this weekend and sue says i don't know rock climbing sounds dangerous so sue is worried about anna cecilia is worried about going rock climbing. That is correct. Sue is worried about going rock climbing. Yeah, that's right. Very good. She's worried about going rock climbing. Okay, about is a preposition. Therefore, the verb that follows is in ing form. Very good. Thank you. 
What about number six? Josh says, what sort of volunteer work do you do for the library, Celia? And Celia says, I love kids. So I volunteer as a children's storyteller on Saturdays. So what does Celia enjoy? Celia enjoys... What does she enjoy? Mm -hmm. Again, her answer is, I love kids, so I volunteer as a children's storyteller on Saturdays. So what does she enjoy? Do you have the answer, Madeline? I guess Cecilia enjoys to be a children's storyteller. Storyteller. It's actually a bit different. It's a bit different. Okay. But but thank you for participating. For one thing, enjoy is one of those verbs that is always followed by the ing form. Uh, Gabriel Antonio. I guess it's uh, Celia enjoys volunteering as a children's storyteller on Saturdays. Okay, Celia enjoys volunteering as a children's storyteller. I'm not really sure that you will get the right, uh, the correct answer if you say on Saturdays, even though it is correct. Okay, but if it doesn't work, don't include it. Just say volunteering as a children's storyteller. Okay, that's really good. Thank you, Gabriel. Okay. That's the right answer right there. Okay, cool. So, um, let me see, give me a second here, because we're a little bit delayed, so we're going to skip directly onto the next part. Okay, so there's a lesson objective. Everybody take a look. At the end of this section, participants will be able to talk about how people have changed and practice using the vocabulary. That's uh, lesson objective 1.3. And for that, for this, I'm sorry, we're going to do a listening activity, okay? So here's the first part. So listening activity, take a good look. Changes, okay? Listen to Marcus and Heather talk about how they have changed over the, the last five years. How did they change? Complete the chart with the expressions from the box, okay? So what are the expressions from the box? You have kind and generous, friendly and outgoing, shy and reserved, wild and crazy. So Marcus used to be how? You have to choose one of these four elements. And Marcus has become, now in the present, you have to give me another one. Now, the same thing with Heather. Heather used to be how? Kind and generous, friendly and outgoing, shy and reserved, or wild and crazy. And Heather has become, that's the thing. So for this activity, uh, please um, take notes, all right? I want you to take notes because after that, uh, you'll have to tell me the answers. Okay, so let's begin. I'm going to play the track. Uh, just let me know if you can hear it. Page four. Could you hear that? Yes, I can, teacher. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. All right, so listen, again, remember, you have to choose uh, one of these four entries here. Kind and generous, friendly and outgoing, shy and reserved, wild and crazy. So what Marcus used to be like and uh, how Marcus has become, okay? And the same thing with Heather, okay? What she used to be like and what she has become. Let's listen. Five, changes. B, listen again. Which person do you think would be more likely to do these things this weekend? Check Marcos or Heather. One, Marcos. Well. I guess the biggest change in my life over the last five years is that I got married. You know, I used to be into going out with friends every weekend and staying out late. We were pretty wild and crazy back then. Now, I'm more of a family man. I don't mind staying at home, watching TV, that kind of thing. I'm even learning to cook. It's not so bad. I guess you could say that I started to grow up. I wasn't so interested in going out all the time. I was ready to settle down and have a family. 
I have to be honest, my heart wasn't really in the right place before. I mean, before I didn't mind being, well, a little irresponsible at times, even selfish. I was always out having fun with my friends, but I never wanted to hear about their problems. I just didn't care. But with my wife and little boy, it's different. I'm trying to become more, you know, more kind and generous. I want to be there to help them out, no matter how small the problem. 2. Heather I have to say, five years ago, I was a completely different person. I never said much in a crowd, and I always tried to avoid making small talk with people I didn't know very well. But really, I was just incredibly shy and reserved. Anyway, then I went away to college, and I had this roommate, Nora. She had a great sense of humor and laughed at all my jokes. That really gave me a lot of confidence. Nora and I joined a small study group at school. When we finish studying, a bunch of us go out for coffee. Conversation is easy because we all have a lot of the same interests. Now, my new friends think of me as the funny one in the group. Can you believe it? So, I'd say I'm much more friendly and outgoing now. I don't worry about speaking up and giving my opinion anymore. In fact, I'm thinking about joining a few more clubs so I can meet even more new people and do more things. Okay. Um... I assume we have the answer. What about Marcus? Marcus used to be, if you have the answer, you can let me know, okay? Marcus. Did he used to be kind and generous, friendly and outgoing, shy and reserved, or wild and crazy? What's the answer? If you know the answer, please remember. Okay, Madeline, thank you. Marcos used to be wild and crazy. Yeah, that's right. He used to be wild and crazy. Thank you. And uh, how has he become? Can you tell me, Madeline? Yes, he has become kind and generous. Kind and generous, of course. Okay, thank you very much. That is correct. He used to be wild and crazy and has become kind and generous. Okay, very good. What about the next one with Heather? Okay. So, Byron, okay. Heather used to be shy and reserved. Mm -hmm. And now? Has become friendly and outgoing. That is correct. Yeah. Okay. She used to be um, shy and reserved and has become friendly and outgoing. Okay. Very good. Very, very good. Okay. So what are we going to do right here? A little bit of speaking, okay? Discussion number six, how have you changed? How have you changed over the last five years? What do you want to change now? Complete the chart, okay? So I'm just, I'm, I'm going to give you uh, just a couple minutes, okay? Two minutes for you to complete this chart. So how you have changed in habits, personality, likes and dislikes, and how you would like to change in the future, okay? So I just want you to, to complete this chart, okay, with the right information. I'm going to give you two minutes, and after that, I'm going to ask for volunteers so you can share what you have with the class, okay? So uh, time begins right now. Please complete the chart, everybody, with your own information, how you have changed in the last five years, and what you would like to change in the future, okay? or in the present. Let's begin. Two minutes.
One more minute. Okay, time's up. How I've changed. Remember that you can use the same structure that you saw or that you heard in the listening part, okay? You can say, I use to, and then you use a verb, okay? Like you can say, for example, I used to, then you describe your habits, personality. I used to be, and then you mention some adjectives, okay? Likes and dislikes, you can say, I used to like, but not anymore. So what about the first part? Okay, how I've changed. I need a volunteer, please. Who would like to ch to share with the rest of the class? Saul Arnulfo, let's begin. Okay, uh, the first one. Uh, I used to be very shy. Okay. And the other part, uh, I would like to change my shyness. Okay, I would like to change my shyness. But there is one thing I don't understand because when you say I used to be very shy, that sounds like you are not shy anymore. Okay, sorry. Uh -huh. No, it's okay, don't worry. Okay, but that's the thing. Uh, remember that in the first part you have how I have changed, okay? If you say I used to be very shy, that means that now you're not shy. You are like a sociable and outgoing, but it's okay. Thank you for participating. Um, someone else? Okay, what can you say here? You can talk about your habits, your personality, your likes and dislikes, how you have changed in the last five years, and how you would like to change in the future. Volunteer, please. Don't be shy. You can do this. Gabriela Sequeira. I used to be, sorry, I used to avoid any kind of exercise. Okay. Before. <laughs> but I was too, I was very lazy. Okay. So you can say, I used to be very lazy. I used to be very lazy. Okay. All right. And how would you like to change in the future? And I would like to start going to the gym now. Okay. You would start to you you would like to start to go to the gym again. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you, Gabriela. All right. Very, very good. One more person, please. Okay. One more person who wants to share, okay, um with the rest of the class. I appreciate your participation, everybody. So um, every if you raise your hand, if you want to say something, your comments are always welcome. Don't be shy, come on. Okay, Madeline. Well, I used to be very shy when I was a teenager. Okay. So, and... Uh, I've changed to talk to new people, but okay. I do, but nowadays I'm trying again because I'd like to improve my po speaking public okay. skill. Okay, your your public speaking skills. Okay, all right. So that's good. Okay, that that's a that's a very nice goal that you have right there. It's it's good to, uh, it's a nice Thank objective. You. Okay, to try to uh, improve your uh, public speaking skills. 
Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thanks uh, for your participation. Okay, all those who have participated. If you are not participating, well, the invitation is always there. Okay, try to participate. I want to hear your voices. Okay, I'm going to say this in Spanish. Okay, um, I'm going to say this in Spanish. Eh, Quiero escucharlo a los demás, ¿verdad? No solo a los mismos, los que me están participando. Excelente. Los que tal vez no estamos participando, anímense un poquito, ¿verdad? Que no solo les escuche la voz al principio cuando me dicen present teacher. <ríe> Una vez en toda la clase. No, tratemos de hablar, ¿ok? Perdamos esa... Eh, si existiera alguna vergüenza, ¿verdad? Hay que perderla, hay que animarnos un poco, ¿ok? I always say this, okay, if, if you want to learn to swim, you have to throw yourself into the swimming pool. If you don't do it, you will never learn, okay? So it's the same thing in English. If you want to learn to speak, well, you have to speak, okay? There's no other way. All right, um, let's do this, okay? Useful expressions describing how you have changed. You say, I used to, but now I, etc., etc. I think I have become more... Etc. Etc. You have to use an adjective right there, describing how you would like to change. I would like to be more sensitive. I would like to be more uh, confident. Okay. I'm interested in, example, uh, learning uh, a new language. I'm interested in, you know, practicing uh, martial arts, for example. Etc. Etc. So that's the idea. You have some useful expressions right there that you can use to express how you have changed and how you would like to change in the future. So uh, moving on, that's exercise or that's section 1.4, how have you changed? Now there's a listening exercise, which is 1.5. Okay, again, uh, we have listened to it, which is uh, Marcos and uh, Heather. So listen again, I'm going to play the track one more time. Which person do you think is will be more likely to do these things this weekend check marcus or heather so the first one is stay out late at the big party who will do that marcus or heather stay home and watch tv who will do that marcus or heather help a relative with a personal problem and invite a classmate to a funny movie i'm going to play the track one more time and i want you to listen and complete this okay for each item, you can only choose one person. It's either Marcus or Heather, but not both of them. So I'm playing the track uh, for the second time. Please listen to it and, uh, you know, uh, check the right boxes. Page four, five, changes. B, listen again. Which person do you think would be more likely to do these things this weekend? Check Marcos or Heather. 1. Marcos Well, I guess the biggest change in my life over the last five years is that I got married. You know, I used to be into going out with friends every weekend and staying out late. We were pretty wild and crazy back then. Now, I'm more of a family man. I don't mind staying at home, watching TV, that kind of thing. I'm even learning to cook. It's not so bad. I guess you could say that I started to grow up. I wasn't so interested in going out all the time. I was ready to settle down and have a family. I have to be honest, my heart wasn't really in the right place before. I mean, before I didn't mind being, well, a little irresponsible at times, even selfish. I was always out having fun with my friends, but I never wanted to hear about their problems. I just didn't care. But with my wife and little boy, it's different. I'm trying to become more, you know, more kind and generous. I want to be there to help them out, no matter how small the problem. 2. Heather I have to say, five years ago, I was a completely different person. I never said much in a crowd, and I always tried to avoid making small talk with people I didn't know very well. But really, I was just incredibly shy and reserved. Anyway, then I went away to college, and I had this roommate, Nora. She had a great sense of humor and laughed at all my jokes. That really gave me a lot of confidence. Nora and I joined a small study group at school. When we finish studying, a bunch of us go out for coffee. Conversation is easy because we all have a lot of the same interests. Now, my new friends think of me as the funny one in the group. Can you believe it? So, I'd say I'm much more friendly and outgoing now. 
I don't worry about speaking up and giving my opinion anymore. In fact, I'm thinking about joining a few more clubs so I can meet even more new people and do more things. Okay. So who will stay out late at the big party? If you know, please raise your hand. Who will do that? Elizabeth. Um, is Heather. 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 That's right. It's Heather. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Okay, number two. Who will stay home and watch TV? Byron. Marcos. It will be Marcos. That is correct. Thank you very much. Okay. Number three. Who will stay? Who will help a relative with a personal problem? If you know the answer, raise your hand. Elizabeth. Marcus. That will be Marcus too. Yeah, that's right. And number four. Uh, who will invite a classmate to a funny movie? Who will do that? Gabriela Alejandra. Heather. That'll be Heather. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, very good. That will be Heather. All right, that's great. That was the listening exercise. You have it in the platform too. It's the listening right here. Okay, so um, it's the same thing. You have to choose the option and the options are Marcus or Heather. Okay, it's the same exercise. So if you completed it here, the same answers are in the platform, 1.5. Okay, so um, just a moment. Okay. Now, um, that was like the end of, uh, say, uh, ah, sorry, Ale uh, Gabriela Alejandra, do you have a question? Oh, no. No, no. <laughs> you forgot to lower your hand. Okay. Uh, uh, no, my no. apologies. Thank you. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, well, we have the second section, which is, uh, say, uh, what is that? Lesson B, okay, in the manual. So different types of family. We're going to learn a little bit of vocabulary before we finish the class. Okay, we still have a lot to cover. Starting point, look at the families in the picture. What's different about each type of family? Okay, well, because of the time, we're going to read this directly. What's your family like? In other words, uh, they want to know about your family. They want, to, they want you to provide information about your family. So you have the Watsons from Sydney, the Wangs from Vancouver, and the Patels from London. So, we have this, the Watsons, Sydney, okay? Uh, I need a volunteer to help me read this, please. It's just reading, okay? And I'm checking for pronunciation. Okay, Saul Arnulfo, you help me read the first one. Gabriel Antonio, you help me read the second one. Okay. Okay, so, I'm going to start. Okay. Okay, my wife and I both work now, and the extra money is great. The only trouble with being a two-income family is we don't spend as much time together. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, it says, my wife and I both work now and the extra money is great. The only trouble with being a two-income family is we don't spend as much time together. Thank you very much. Uh, do you have any questions about the vocabulary here? Any questions? Any questions about the vocabulary in the paragraph? No? What is a two-income family? Can you explain that? What is a two-income family? Any ideas? Hello? Gabriel? I guess it's, for example, when the father and the mother works, work and they don't spend time alone with the baby, I guess. Yeah, that's that's pretty much the idea. Thank you, Gabriel. Yeah, a two-income family is a family in which uh, both spouses, that is the wife and the husband, okay, most traditionally, right, uh, both work. They both have a job. So what is the problem with that? As they say in the paragraph, we don't spend as much time together, okay? That's it. When I was younger, okay, well, when I was a kid, okay, because I'm not young anymore. Uh, when I was a kid, I uh, I remember that only my father worked. So it was basically a one income family. But then when I was like in sixth grade or something, my mother started to work and then we became a two income family. 
And it is true, okay? There isn't much time to spend with your family when that happens. But nowadays, I believe it's absolutely necessary, okay? If you get married and only one person is working, that's not enough, okay? Both people have to work. Everything is really expensive. Okay, um, Gabriel, can you help me read the second one? The Wangs from Vancouver. We're an extended family now that Brahma has moved in. The big mm -hmm. advantage of having her at home is that she can babysit more often. Yeah, that's correct. Thank you, uh, Gabriel. Again, it reads, we're an extended family now that grandma has moved in. Now, question, what is an extended family? What's an extended family? Gabriela Alejandra. Living. A big family? I'm sorry? A big family, not only the nuclear nuclear, nuclear family. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's uh, When you refer to your extended family, you're talking about, you know, uh, anyone who doesn't usually live in your house. It could be your grandparents, your uncle, your aunt, your cousins, uh, nephews, nieces, etc. All those people are your extended family. So, yeah, that is correct. Thank you, Gabriela. So, yeah. Uh, continuing, the big advantage of having her at home is that she can babysit more often. And the last one, the Patels from London. Okay, so who can help me read this one? Byron. The Patels London. We are a typical nuclear family. It's just my sister, my parents, and me. The only bad thing about living in our house is there's only one bathroom. Yes, okay. Just like my house. Okay. Thank you, Byron. Uh, yeah, the Patels from London say we're a typical nuclear family. Now, what's a nuclear family? It's the opposite of an extended family. A nuclear family is the, the people you live with. It's usually the mother, the father, and the children. That's it. That's a nuclear family. So it's just my sister, my parents, and me. The only bad thing about living in our house is there is only one bathroom. And that definitely is a disadvantage, okay? I know that now, okay, because I moved into this house uh, a few months ago and, and there's only one bathroom. And in the house that I used to live in before, there were th three. And in the house that I used to live in before that one, there were three also, okay? So when I moved into this house that I'm in right now, now there's only one and, and I can totally feel the difference. Okay. Sometimes you want to go and like, who's inside? I want to get in. Okay. It's, it's, it's a bit annoying, but anyway, okay. It is what it is. So um, here we go. So you have two income family, uh, extended family and nuclear family, some vocabulary for us right here. So how are the families different? Okay, we're going to solve this exercise. This is going to be the last exercise today because it's 8.58. How are the families different? Uh, listening and speaking. Listen to Paul and Andrea talk about their families. What kind of family did each person grow up in? How have their families changed? We're going to do this exercise along with B, which is listen again. Match the people on the left with the phrases on the right. So there's Andrea. Andrea's husband, Andrea's sister-in-law, Paul's sister, Paul, Paul's mother, and the phrases are, has two daughters, doesn't know her in-laws very well. Ah, by the way, do you know the meaning of in-laws? What are the in-laws? If you know the answer, please let me know. I don't think we will be able to complete this. It's, all, it's, all, it's almost nine. But okay, uh, Elmer, what, what are the in-laws? Yes, cuñados or cuñadas. Well, yeah, that those are examples of it. Okay, it could be your, your father-in-law, your mother-in-law, your son-in-law, your daughter-in-law, your brother-in-law, your sister-in-law. In other words, that means they are the family of the person you marry. Okay, so I am married, okay, um, the parents of my wife, okay, her sisters, okay, those are my in-laws. Her father is my father-in-law. Her mother is my mother-in-law. Okay. Her sister is my sister-in-law, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's that family that you acquire, we can say, when you get married to someone. You are not blood related, but now you're family. So 
that's the idea. Listen, um, it's 8.59, so I don't think we'll be able to do this. It's nine, actually. So this is probably going to take us about seven or eight minutes. So because of the time, we're going to do it tomorrow. Uh, before we leave, I'm just going to uh, call your names on the attendance list one more time, just to make sure you're here. Ana Cecilia Rodriguez de Perez. Is Ana Cecilia here with us tonight? I am here, teacher. Thank you very much. Okay, welcome. Uh, Cristina Abigail Quintanilla Amador. Yes, I am here. Okay, welcome. Erika Maricela Morales Cordero. I'm here. Thank you very much. And Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. I think, okay, she's here in the list. I can see her. Okay, maybe she can hear me right now. Okay, but she was there. All right, uh, that's good. We had full house today. Everybody was present. That is that is excellent. Always remember that um, it's, it's, it's part of our uh, responsibility always be in class and also, also to spend in the meeting for as long as possible because the platform, the Zoom platform counts every minute you're in and every minute counts in the end for you to complete your uh, uh, participation and completion uh, percentage. Remember that you have to reach an 80%. So it's, it's very important that you connect to every meeting uh, whenever possible, of course, and also that you stay in the meeting for as long as possible. All right. So uh, thank you very much. Okay. And uh, I will see everybody tomorrow. Good night. Okay, teacher. Good night, teacher. Bye. Bye. Okay. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow.